Angela and this is Devon Thread Tales. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to be doing another sew along and that is of the Sewaholic 1206 pattern, the Hollyburn Skirt. This is a really beginner friendly pattern. I absolutely love it. I think it's a really nice style, but it's really easy to sew. It's something that can be really dressed up or it can be dressed down. I've got two versions of it that I made a very long time ago and I wear them to work and I also wear them casually as well. I think it looks really nice. My three children have also made versions of this and they don't sew an awful lot. So, that kind of proves that it is quite a beginner friendly pattern and I'm going to put some pictures just here of the two versions I've made and the three versions that they have made as well. So things to note on this pattern, it has a flat waistband, there's no elastic in it, it's just fitted all the way around so it's really important that you get your waist measurement correct and then it has four panels, two front panels so it has a centre seam and two back panels and it's all um, joined at the back by a zip. Now it says in the pattern to use a nine inch ordinary zip which is absolutely fine you can use that however I really prefer the look of an invisible zip so that's what I'm going to be using and that's what I'm going to be showing you how to insert in my sew along today. Obviously you are more than welcome to you know do your own version of this skirt as well. This isn't um, anything of me saying to you how you should be sewing it, this is just what I like to do myself. So this comes in sizes 0 to 16 which is from a size 0 is a waist 24 and hip 36 up to a size 16 which is a waist 35 hip 47. Now I don't go by the hip measurements at all, I only ever go by my waist measurements and the reason I do that is because there's an awful lot of ease in the hip area so it doesn't really affect the um, fit of it at all. It, like I say it's just really essential to get that waist measurement right. My waist measurement is, a, is 30 inches and my hips are 37 and so I'm going to be doing the size 10 which is a waist 30 but the hip size is 42. I know that's an awful lot bigger than my actual hip measurement but I don't care about that because it is a, like I say, a nice soft sort of flowy skirt. The um, finished garment measurements for that size is a waist 37 and I'm going to be doing version B which is the medium length so the hip um, finished measurement on that is 58 inches so you can see it really doesn't matter what your hip measurement is just your waist measurement. So the skirt has also got these inset pockets which I'm not sure you're going to be able to see very well on the camera there but hopefully you'll have been able to see them on the pictures that I put up of the versions that I've made before. So they're not inseam pockets, they're inset and they're really really easy to do and they just give this skirt a really nice sort of look. You can also put belt loops on this which I'm not going to be doing on mine and you can also put these um, not sure if you can see it. I think it's on this middle version here sort of almost like lapels on the um, on the waistband so yeah just some different versions that you can use just also to mention the length on these so I'm going to be making the size 10 so I'll just quickly tell you the different um, variations in length the shortest version is 18 and 3 quarters long inches and the medium version is 22 and 3 quarter inches long and the longest length is 25 and 3 quarters long. <laughs> I, think that, I think I've said that right. So yeah, so that, that's the sort of difference in the length on all of those. So I'll show you the fabric that I'm going to be using. It does say in the instructions to use non-directional print and not to use plaids and things like that. But as you can see, my daughter made a plaid version and it just looked absolutely gorgeous. So I'm not too worried about that. It's meant for woven fabric, sort of lightweight chambres, um, linens, um, cotton lawns and that kind of thing and I'm actually going to be using a crepe so this is quite a lot lighter and floatier than anything that I've used before. This fabric actually has a very small amount of stretch in it um, but I don't think it's going to make very much difference to the fit. I'm still going to make the same size because there's only a very very small amount of stretch but I really really love this fabric. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I bought it from Minerva.com. If they've still got it in stock I'll link it in the comments in the description below so that you can go and have a look at it if you want it but yeah I just thought those colors were absolutely gorgeous and obviously you could then pair that with any of the colors that are in this fabric for a top so I'm going to start laying this out but I'll whiz through a little bit as I'm lining it all up and getting it all set up just seen 
there I've just been pegging my um, fabric to the side of my cutting board just to keep it in place and I've just been using these little clips they're just little sewing clips they're really inexpensive I think I got mine from Amazon um, and they're just really great for holding things in place especially when you're cutting out a pattern so that's what I've been doing there just popping my um, little wonder clips or sewing clips onto my board and keeping my fabric in place so I'm now just going to flip my pattern piece over for my skirt and um, try and cut out the mirror Im image on the other side pieces um, cut out. I have been going around and snipping all the notches using my little um, snippy snip scissors, snizzers? <laughs> scissors as well, just making sure all the notches are cut. I think um, in terms of the skirt it's quite an easy skirt and it's just got straight sides so it's very easy to sort of just pop them together and you'd, you'd kind of um, wouldn't be wrong in thinking you could miss out the notches but when it comes to the pockets I think it's quite important that you put the notches in because it just helps line everything up so do make sure that you mark them whether you mark them with scissors or you mark them with some chalk or a pin or something like that I think it's quite important so I'm going to pack this away for now and I will come back to you tomorrow so now that all the pieces are now cut out I've also cut out a piece of interfacing for the waistband and I've actually gone ahead and I've attached that to my waistband piece so I've just used a piece of really lightweight interfacing because my fabric's really lightweight apparently the rule of thumb is whatever weight your fabric is and the feel of it it should mirror the weight and the feel of the um, interfacing as well I don't know where I picked that tip up from but somebody told me that somewhere along the line so I've kind of stuck with that so I'm now going to put my waistband piece to one side and I'm also going to put my um, pocket pieces to one side. In the pattern the first sta stage is to actually start stitching your pockets to your centre front pieces but what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to um, neaten the seam allowances on the two centre front um, seams of the skirt and the two centre back seams of the skirt. So on your centre front or on your front skirt pieces you have a pocket section like this and a straight section like this and I'm going to take each piece individually and I'm just going to use my overlocker to just run down the front of each of those I'm not going to cut any of the fabric off I'm literally going to go down the very edge and I'm going to do that individually on both of those pieces and then on my back section on the very back of the skirt you've got um, obviously two straight edges so it's harder to tell which one it is but on the on one side you have two um, notches and it actually says centre back on the on the back of the pattern as well so you're going to just go down there and overlock the um, seam allowance for both of the individual pieces of the back piece now you could just use your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch I'm going to use my overlocker because I've got that but you, like I say you could just um, zigzag stitch it but what's really important is once you've done that is you go back and you remark where your notches are on everything so I'm going to go ahead and get those overlocked now Okay, so I'm just about to start serging those um, seam allowances and I thought it was just really important to let you know what I've got my uh, serger set up as or my overlocker set up as. So my overlocker is a Janome 6234XL and obviously everybody's machine is going to be set up very, very differently. But I've got mine on a stitch length between a 2 and a 3. My differential feed is on 0.75 and I've got each of my... Um, needles and loopers set on tension three. I've tested this on a piece of scrap fabric and I'm really happy that that is set at the correct tension. I've also got my sewing machine set up and I've got a size 70 needle and I've got it on a stitch length two and that seems to be working fine as well. I did a little test run on that and that's all fine. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to get those pieces serged together or serged separately should I say. <laughs> Okay, so now that those um, 
seams are now all separately overlocked or serged, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remark where my notches are, certainly on my back um, piece. You can do it on your centre front piece as well. I can actually ever so slightly see them because I did little snips, but they're not very clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark them with my um, little chalk marker that I've got here. Um, so it's just a bit clearer and... Yeah, see this one's not very clear at all. I can tell from the back, but I can't tell from the front very easily. So there we go. Just going to mark those. And then when it comes to putting in the zip and attaching the centre back seams together, that's just going to make that a whole lot easier. So now we can put the back pieces to one side and we're going to actually start making um, the pockets up with the front sections of the skirt. So I've got one of the skirt front pieces and I've got one of the skirt pocket pieces as well and I'm just going to place the corresponding pocket to the corresponding um, front section right sides together and these should just sit really nicely and pin really nicely together. Make sure you've got the edges um, lined up on the side skirt and the top. Now my fabric is very um, slippy and slightly stretchy so mine might be ever so slightly um, not absolutely perfectly lined up together and that's purely because it's moved around a little bit when I've actually sewn it but I think it'll be fine so I'm just going to pin this together okay and then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side and I'm going to sew this with a one and a half centimetre seam allowance all the way along here, just following the um, edge all the way around. So just when you get to that corner section, just ease it around ever so slightly. Just go nice and slowly. Keeping the edge of the fabric on your one and a half centimetre seam allowance. Okay, so there we have the um, pocket attached to the, um, the skirt front. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to very slightly trim that down and I'm just going to do that using a pair of straight scissors. You could do it with pinking shears, but I'm just going to take it down by just under half of the seam allowance. So it reduces any bulk, like so. And then I'm going to take my little um, snip scissors that I have here. I don't know if you saw me cut that then, sorry, I'm not sure if that was on the screen or not. Um, I'm just going to snip where the curve of the pocket is, but I'm just doing that literally up to the stitch line. It doesn't need to be the whole way around or down here it just needs to be where it's curved okay now in the instructions it will now tell you to iron the pocket away from the skirt because what we're going to do now is we're going to do some stay stitching now with the sewing that I've done, I've got to a point where actually I much prefer to do this without ironing it and ironing it afterwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the seam allowance out to one side, away from the skirt, and we're going to fold the pocket piece out to the same side. And what we're going to do is we're going to stitch really, really closely um, to this seam line on the side of the pocket attaching the seam allowance and the pocket piece together all the way down and the reason I like to do this without ironing it is because I feel you get a better finish by just sort of pressing it apart with your fingers and then once you've done that then just gently press it into place so I'm going to change my camera so that you can see what that looks like when I'm doing it up close on the um, on the sewing machine I am going to change my sewing machine foot I have this foot here which hopefully you can see. Now it doesn't actually matter, you don't have to change it but I find this one much easier to um, get a, a closer finish on my edges because it just seems to keep everything um, all in line and it pushes everything to one side. Okay so I've changed my presser foot and now I'm going to take my fabric and on the right side I'm just going to have my 
This is the side of my pocket, this is the side of the skirt and I've got my seam allowance pressed towards the pocket edge and I'm just going to place that and drop my foot onto it. There we go. And I'm just going to sew very carefully, very gently, making sure that that seam allowance is pressed to that side the whole way down. Gently pulling the fabric apart as you're going as well. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that stitch line there, but just stitch very close to that seam, um, the join that's there. And what that means is that when the pocket is folded over and we actually press that all in place, it means that that's not going to flip out um, when you're wearing it, which obviously just makes it a little bit nicer so that you're not always sort of fussing with your pocket. So I'm going to move my camera now and I'm just going to get on and do exactly the same on the opposite pocket. Okay, so now that we've stay stitched all of that pocket onto the front skirt on both sides, I've taken my front skirt piece and I've actually ironed this now. So I've ironed the pocket piece over onto the skirt piece, wrong sides together. And because we've stay stitched that seam allowance to the pocket, it actually sort of um, naturally wants to pull itself ever so slightly more towards the pocket than it does the front. So when you look at the pocket from this side, you can't see any stitching at all, which is great because it looks really nice and neat. So while I was there um, ironing that over very carefully and very gently, um, I then ironed my pocket piece in half right sides together. So there should be some markings on your pattern piece that indicate where the halfway mark is. But basically what you're doing is you're pulling this outer edge here and you're pulling it over towards the outer edge of the opposite side of the pocket on this little section here and the top should match up as well and there should be some notches which you're going to match up to those um, areas on your skirt so that's essentially folding this piece of pocket absolutely in half so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this together and I'm going to pin the other side together and then I'm going to stitch this along here by one and a half centimetres and I'm also going to overlock the edge just to finish off that edge. When you're sewing it, you need to make sure that the rest of the skirt is not in your stitching at all. So this is a totally sort of um, separate piece if you like, although it's attached by this seam line here, we're not sewing this to the skirt, we are purely sewing the facing to itself or the pocket to itself along that bottom edge. So I'm just going to get that pinned and I'll get the other one pinned as well and then I'll get that sewn up. Okay, so as you can see, we have um, the pocket all done. I'll show you from the wrong side. So the pocket's all stitched in place and attached to the skirt. This seam allowance has been stitched and um, the seam allowance has been overlocked to keep it nice and neat. I'll probably give it a little bit of a press. This fabric is ever so slightly stretchy and it's um, making it a little bit wiggly, but every time I press it, it just goes beautifully flat. So it seems to be working absolutely fine. So then from the front side, you can see we've got um, the pocket and it's just sitting really nicely. Pop your hand in, obviously it's a nice big pocket. So what I'm going to do now on both sides is I'm just going to pin the top section here to the skirt. So I'm pinning the pocket to the skirt and there do the same, then do the same on this section down here. And I'm just going to run a little line of stitching under the seam allowance, so roughly one centimetre, something like that, or you could just use the edge of your presser foot just to keep that in place so that when we attach the skirt um, sides together and we attach the waistband together, this is all going to get caught in correctly. So I'm going to do that on both sides and then just stitch that in place. 
So I'm just going to use the edge of my foot on here and you can increase your stitch length if you want to but there's not particularly any need but I'm just going to run one line of stitching up until the edge of that pocket finishes. And on the top section So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the opposite side as well and then I'm just going to give it all a very quick light press and we'll get on with the next step. Okay so now that we've got our pockets all done and in place on our skirt, our skirt fronts we're going to put the two um, skirt fronts together lining up the centre front seam. Now there shouldn't be any easing in or anything like that this should lay really nicely together because it is just two totally straight um, seams and they should be exactly the same length. There are notches along here to guide you to pin it together and sew together as well. So we're just going to pin this together and we're going to sew it at the one and a half centimetre seam allowance. We've already finished off our seam allowance edges so once we've sewn that together we're just going to press the seam allowances open. So I'll just start pinning this I'm going to sew that at one and a half centimetres, just straight down the centre front. So that's the centre front joined together. I'm going to take this to my iron now and I'm just going to press those seam allowances open like this and then we'll start attaching the skirt backs to the skirt fronts. So there we have the skirt fronts all attached together. I've pressed the seam allowance open, so that's looking really nice and neat. It was great because obviously these seam allowances were finished already, so we didn't have to fuss with those once they were attached, making it really easy just to um, get that all pressed and finished. So now what we're going to do is going to turn the skirt um, front over so that the right side is facing you, and we're going to take one of the skirt backs and we're going to put the skirt back edge along the skirt front edge. So I have my skirt back pieces here so we need to make sure we get the correct one. Now obviously on these we haven't finished the seam allowance and that's because we're going to finish the seam allowance together on these once we have sewn them together. So again this is just a straight edge there shouldn't be any fussing in terms of um, you know trying to match this up um, there is a notch here which you need to try and line up with your pocket edge but it should line up perfectly because it's just a very straight edge. So I'm going to get that pinned together. I'm also going to pin the other side as well and then I'm going to sew that on my machine with a one and a half centimetre seam allowance and then once I've sewn it with the um, sewing machine I'm going to take it to my overlocker or serger and I'm going to finish the edges together and then press them towards the back. Now when you get to your pocket section where you're stitching the front and the back together and, and the pocket is attached to the front everything should be lying really nicely in place because we've stitched it in place but just be really mindful when you get to that section that you can feel that it is laying flat that you're not catching the pocket up underneath it or anything like that um, yeah just to be really mindful that the pocket is out of the way and just this edge is attached to the front are joined together as you can see the skirt is now beginning to look much more like a skirt <laughs> so what we're going to do is those seam allowances that we've just um, attached with those side seams that we've just attached I'm now just going to run my overlocker over both of those edges um, I'm not going to particularly cut off very much of the um, seam I'm just literally going to run it over it and then I'm going to press those towards the back So now that I've overlocked those um, seam allowances, I'm going to take that to the iron, give that a press along there, and then this is the back of my skirt, this is the front of my skirt, I'm going to press the seam allowances all towards the back of the skirt. So I'm going to take that away now and do that, and then we can start thinking about attaching the 
waistband. Okay, so now we're going on to the waistband and I've gone ahead and actually pressed my waistband already. So I thought I would just show you what I've done. So the waistband comes as one long continuous piece and one edge has notches and one edge does not. So the edge that does not have notches on it, you need to press wrong side to wrong side up by the seam allowance. Now I've used my um, Clover hot pressing um, cloth and use the seam um, as a guide, but you can use anything, you know, if you have a ruler or anything like that, just press it up by one and a half centimeters all the way along the edge. You could also get a ruler and a marker pen and just mark along there to give you a guide, whatever is easiest for you to do that. The instructions now tell you to um, trim this seam allowance down by half of the um, half of the seam allowance that's been pressed up. I'm going to use my um, my pinking shears, but you can just use straight scissors, whichever is easiest for you. So I'm just going to trim that along there. There we go. So I've trimmed that down. Um, I probably could have trimmed it down a little bit more and I could have taken a little bit more of the length off of that seam allowance but I'm happy with how that is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start attaching the um, waistband to the skirt. Okay so we're going to attach the um, waistband to the skirt front or the skirt in total <laughs> not just the skirt front and although I have marked my notches on my waistband with little snips I've just actually popped some pins in there just to make them a little bit more noticeable. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay our waistband right side of the waistband to right side of the skirt and we're going to have the notched edge joining to the edge of the skirt. So the bit that we've just trimmed with the notches on is down the bottom. So we're going to take our centre notch and we're going to line that up with our centre of our skirt. Now what I like to do is I like to pin both of those seam allowances down on both sides because the seam allowance on the skirt front is open. I'll turn it over and show you just a second. So the seam allowance is open and when I stitch that I don't want those to get caught and sort of moved and folded in or pushed to one side. So I pin those down and in place. I'm then going to take my other notch marking on my waistband and I'm going to pin that to my um, side seam of my skirt. And again I'm going to pin down my seam allowance because on the side seams we've got our seam allowances pressed towards the back so I've got that pinned down in place so that stays nice and secure. I'm going to do the same on the other side seam so match that up with your notch and your side seam pinning down your seam allowance Oops, try not to stab yourself with the pin as well. <laughs> I'm then going to take the outer edge of the um, of the skirt waistband and I'm going to pin that to the outer edge of the skirt and again on the opposite side as well. Like so. There we go. And then I'm just going to go along and I'm going to pin all the bits in between those pins that I've done because those are the most important markings. So we've got those secured in place. So I'm going to pin the bits in between. Now there shouldn't be a lot of easing in between the centre front and the side seam, but there will be a very small amount of ease in the um, last two pins. So from the side seam to the outer edge, but very, very minimal. So you just need to sort of manipulate the fabric and just get those pinned in place um, ever so slightly. What I do is I start by holding the pins. I don't know if you saw what I did there. I'll take that out. I start by holding the two pins and then the pieces of fabric that I need to get to um, stay together. I sort of pull them up and sort of move my fingers along, pinching all the way along till I get the very center of that. Pin that in place and then obviously you've then got a smaller section. In fact, it's hardly anything at all to pin in place in between those two. So that's what I do. Um, so I'm going to get that pinned all the way along and then what we're going to do is we're going to sew that with a one and a half centimetre seam allowance like we have been the whole way along. Okay, so 
you've got the um, waistband all sewn onto the front of the skirt before you move any further forward I think it's always just a good idea just to double check that you haven't got any um, puckers or anything like that and everything's just sewn really nice and smoothly so now what we're going to do once you are happy with that we're just going to trim the seam allowance down and that's all of the seam allowances we're going to trim those down together so again I'm going to use my pinking shears you can use straight scissors it doesn't matter what you do use but you're just going to take it down to roughly half of what the seam allowance is So I've pressed the seam allowance up towards the waistband, so it's away from the skirt and towards the waistband. And on the edge of the waistband, on each of the um, sections that are nearest to where the zip is going to go, there should be a notch. And I've marked this with a pin just to make it so much clearer so that you can see on the camera here. But I've actually marked it with a little notch um, snip as well. So we're going to start sewing the um, seam allowances at the back of the skirt together but we're going to take into consideration the zip as well. So before I do anything else I'm going to pin this together leaving those pins in marking where the where the notch is. So we're going to match up where the um, match up where the waist band starts. So we get that pinned together and obviously again we've got the seam allowances pressed up towards the um, towards the waistband. We want to try and make sure they stay pressed towards the waistband when we sew it as well. And then we're just going to pin all the way down the skirt until we get to the very end. So now that we've got that all in place and stitched in place, we're going to take our zip and we're going to use this as a little bit of a measuring tool for a moment. The notches that we marked earlier were the notches that um, show you where the waistband gets folded down so that it then creates an enclosed um, seam on the inside of the skirt. And therefore that's where the end of the zip is going to come. So the teeth that are on the zip here is where we want the zip to actually come up and marry up to on the edge of the waistband. We don't want to start our stitching where these bits are because these are just spare bits for um, securing in the zip. So where those notches are, we're going to line that up with the edge of our zip teeth at the top, like so. We're then going to um, just literally, whoops, lay the zip down over the skirt like so and where the end of the zip comes where the teeth end here what we're going to do is we're going to come up roughly a centimeter and a half and we're just going to pop a pin in the, the skirt not the zip and that's going to show us in a moment where we're going to um, change our stitch when we're actually stitching this on the machine. So I'll grab my sewing machine and we'll start stitching this together. Okay, so I've brought my skirt over to my machine and I'm still gonna sew at a one and a half centimeter seam allowance, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to increase my stitch length to the biggest stitch length that I have on my machine, which happens to be a six, but it can just be whichever um, stitch length is your biggest stitch length. And I'm just gonna start sewing. I'm gonna start sewing above these pins um, and I do want to sew over them, but I'm going to go very, very carefully. <laughs> so I'm not going to go back and forth at the start right, of my um, stitching to secure it. I'm just going to do this with the hand wheel, make sure I don't go over the pins. And then the rest of the pins I can take out. When I'm stitching, I'm going to try and make sure that this seam allowance on the joining of the waistband and the skirt stays up towards the waistband. So I'm still going at a large, with a large stitch length. Just going to lift my foot slightly. There we go, just ensuring that stays in place. So I'm going to keep stitching with my large stitch length until I get to the other pin that we put in place, marking the bottom of the zip teeth.
which is here. So here, here's the um, pin that I put in place to mark, to mark the um, bottom of the zip tape. So what I'm going to do, just stitch one or two more stitches down. I'm now going to change my stitch length back to um, a, a stitch length two. I'm going to sew a few stitches. And I'm going to go back just to secure that in place and then I'm going to carry on sewing and finish off the um, seam on the back of the skirt right to the bottom of the skirt. So I'm going to just take this away now and I'm going to press those seam allowances open all the way irrespective of which stitch length um, section of the skirt it is. I'm just going to press those seam allowances open and then I'll come back to you. Okay so now that that is all stitched together and I've pressed the seam allowances apart I'm now going to take some of this, this is some wonder tape and I'm just going to stick this, it's like a double sided um, tape, I'm just going to stick it down between the two pins where the um, zip is going to lay. Once that's down I'm then going to take my zip, I'm going to peel off the back of the um, tape that I've just stuck down and I'm going to place this on top of my seam and stick it to the tape. So I'll just try and peel that off. So I cut my um, my fingernails last night <laughs> and I, that was quite difficult to peel that off because I didn't have quite enough nail to get underneath the, um, the paper of the tape. Okay so as you can see I've left my pins in where um, the top of the tape, uh, the zip teeth need to come and this is the area where the um, zip stitching has finished on the long length and then below this is where I've got my normal stitch um, line so I'm just going to place the zip on top of here lining up where the pin is with the top of the teeth and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do it with the tape flipped back so that I can actually lay the um, center of the zip where the zip actually joins with my actual seam and I can do it very precisely because I'm sort of watching it as it comes down I'm placing it into position sticking it to the tape okay so that's now nicely stuck down and held in place and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some um, white cotton so something that is going to be nice and bright an alternative to the or a contrast to the actual fabric that I'm using and I'm going to do a really long hand stitching based of the zip tape to the seam allowance so I won't be attaching it to the skirt at all I'll just be doing a very long tacking stitch down here attaching the tape to the seam allowance so I'll just get that and show you once I've done it okay so I've hand stitched the um the zip tape to the seam allowance so as you can see if I pull this over it is not attached to the actual skirt itself it is just attached to the seam allowance I've removed my pin now and I've actually replaced that with a chalk mark just so that it's easier for um for myself so I don't have to revolve around a pin. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this the right way round and I'm going to unpick the long length stitches that are in the top section of the um, back that we've just done. So I'll just get my unpicker and I'll unpick that down to where the um, longer stitches, uh, the shorter stitches are in. Okay, so all of the um, the stitches, the long length stitches that we put in place have been removed and obviously everything is being held in place by the seam tape and by the um, long tacking stitches that we just put in by hand. Now I'm really glad that I put the hand stitches in because my tape is obviously a little bit old and it's not sticking very well so if I sort of pull this apart as you can probably see, you can see a little bit of the white tape there which it should be stuck down on but it was good enough just to hold it in place while I did the um, 
tacking stitches. If you don't have that tape, obviously you could just hand stitch this in without doing the tape first, which possibly I could have just got away with doing, like I say, because my tape is a little bit old. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open up that zip. is all caught there we go we're going to open it up like so and just as we get to the bottom I'm just going to pop my hand up through the bottom of the skirt and hopefully I can just pop that zip um, pull through the gap or there shouldn't be a gap actually through the little um, section at the bottom that we've just sewn and if you're having trouble getting that you could just get a pair of tweezers or something like that I think I actually saw um, Sew Essential did something like this and in fact I think they use the same method as I'm using and they actually had a special tool which looked like a medical tool which looked absolutely brilliant I don't know what that is but if I can find out what the name of it is I'll pop it, pop it up on my screen and um, share a link to it because um, it was absolutely brilliant but it was a very similar method to this but they had like a special tool for pulling the zip pull down which is probably slightly easier than what I'm using <laughs> There we go, did it eventually. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and we're going to stitch it in properly. Okay, so I've changed the foot on my sewing machine to an invisible zipper foot and this is what mine looks like. You can get lots of different varieties of them but this is the one that um, I had to get that suits my machine. I've got a Husqvarna Viking Opal 690Q, I think that's what it's called. <laughs> I'm trying to find the name on the front of my machine and I can't. But yes, it's a, it's a Husqvarna machine and that's the the invisible zipper foot that comes with it. It is possible to do this without an invisible zipper. You can put your normal zipper foot on which comes with your machine and you can just use the, uh, change the position of your needle and that is very easy to do. So it you know it is possible to do this without without an invisible zipper. So I'm just going to pop my thread through my foot to get it all in position. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fabric and I am placing the zip teeth to one side and this point, I don't know if you can see the point on my foot, I'm using that to press my zip teeth away from the zip tape and then I'm going to be stitching a straight line on a normal stitch length, the, the stitch length two, I'm going to be stitching that just down um, inside of the teeth of the zip. So I'll get my foot in place. There we go. So it's just going down one side and I'm stitching the zip tape to the seam allowance and nothing else. Okay, so that's one side done. Now going to do the other side. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I have taken out the basting stitches that we hand stitched earlier because I don't want those on show. It's going to be on the inside of your garment anyway and you're not going to see them but I just prefer to take them off because I think it looks more professional when you you know take your garment off and you can't see any of the hand stitching there. I've wiggled my um, zip up a little bit. I did that thinking I was recording it and showing you but um, clearly I hadn't pressed record. <laughs> there we go. So I'm now just going to turn my skirt the right way round so you can see how the invisible zip looks and there we go. It all looks really nice. You can't see the zip. There isn't any um, strange issue at the bottom with the zip um, where the zip stops and the next bit of stitching starts. The hem or the waistband is all in nice and neatly and matches up beautifully because we stitched that in first. So really the next step is to just finish off the waistband and then hem and we're very nearly done. So the next step is to start securing down the rest of the waistband and enclosing all of this seam allowance that we did earlier. 
So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to hand stitch just around the zip. So as you remember, there were uh, there's a notch and we put the zip teeth up to where the notch is. So we're going to very gently just pop that little bit of tape that's above the teeth out of the way to one side. And we're going to pull down the um, hem band so that it sits on the stitch line where the skirt and the hem band are joined together. Just along where that um, zip is, I'm just going to pop a pin in there to keep that in place. This will feel a little bit bulky because there's lots of layers here. So I'm just going to pin that together and I'll do the same on the other side. And then what I've done is I've just put um, some thread onto um, a, a hand needle and I'm just going to hand stitch that down in place just down to where the, um, the bottom of the hem band comes. So I'll start doing that. Okay, so I've hand stitched in those sections of the waistband down onto the zip. So they are all sort of nicely in place now and um, I'm really pleased with how the zip is looking. It's all sort of in really nicely. It looks invisible, which is the look we were going for. <laughs> so the next step is actually to sort out the waistband and how that sits when it's on the inside. Now you have a couple of options here. In fact, the pattern actually suggests you have a couple of options. You can either hand stitch the uh, waistband down or with a slip stitch, or you can stitch in the ditch. Now, I've undenied about what I'm going to do here, and I've done this in a couple of ways before, and I much prefer doing this on the machine because I think um, it's just so much quicker. However, the finish when you do it by hand is so much neater and so much better. So I've decided I'm actually gonna do this by hand. Now, I'm not gonna video me hand stitching this because it will take absolutely ages so I just wanted to explain to you what I was going to do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the waistband which looks like this ordinarily obviously we've stitched down by hand here this bit which is taking the waistband in half and what we're going to do is where this stitch line is here where we've joined the, the um, waistband to the actual skirt we're going to fold down other bit of the waistband until that folded over section of the waistband actually is sitting on or just below the um, stitch line where the skirt and the, the keep calling it hem, the skirt and the waistband join each other. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go along there, I'm going to pin it all in place and then I'm going to go along and I'm going to hand stitch that in um, so it's all really nice and neat. It'll just use a slip stitch. It won't take very long. It'll probably only take about 10, 15 minutes, something like that. But like I say, that's not very interesting for you to watch. So I'm gonna get that done. And then the last thing is to hem it. So we're very nearly there. So I've got the uh, waistband all hand stitched in and sort of um, basted in with my um, hand stitching. So really pleased with how that's looking. I have to say this fabric is really nice. It's really lightweight as in the thickness of it is lightweight, but it's actually got a really nice sort of heavy weight to the drape. So I kind of feel like I'm contradicting myself. It's a lightweight fabric, but it's actually got a really nice weight to it. And I just, I love the colors and everything in it. So I've tried this on very quickly and um, I'm really pleased with the length of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my um, sewing machine to help me create a line to use to iron the hem up by. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch this around the bottom of the hem. I'm going to stitch it using a two centimeter seam allowance. So just literally a long stitch. I'll probably use like a stitch length four, something like that. And I'm going to stitch all the way around. And then using that stitch line, I'm going to iron up the hem towards the stitch line like this and then I will iron it over again. So the stitch line should then just be right on the very edge and you won't be able to see it. It then says in the instructions that you have a choice. You can either then slip stitch it or you can machine 
um, sew it down and I think in this instance I'm going to machine sew it down because it's so patterned you're not going to be able to see that stitch line on the on here anyway so hopefully that will look okay but yeah really really pleased so I'm going to get that done I'll show you a little bit of what I mean as I'm stitching it and then once I have I'll do a few twirls in it and take some pictures and show you what it looks like okay so I'm just going to use my two centimeter line on my um on my machine and I'm going to put my edge of my fabric against that and I'm just going to sew using a stitch length four on my machine I'm just going to sew that all the way around um, I'm just using um, the black thread that I've been using the whole time as I'm going I'm going to make sure that my seam allowances on the reverse of my fabric are being stitched together and stitched down in the correct way that they've been pressed so just when you get to each of your seams just make sure that your seam allowance is facing the right way and that you stitch it in that correct way so I'll get that sewn all the way around Okay, so I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this, but hopefully you can see that there's a stitch line there. So that's the stitch line that I've just put in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this outer edge up towards the, the line that I've stitched. So it makes it really easy to see when you're um, ironing because it's such a large area that you're um, sewing all the way around the skirt. It's just easier than using, say, the hot hammer or something like that. So I'm going to press it along like that up to that stitch line and then once I've done that I'm going to press it over again by the same amount so that stitch line will then just be right on the bottom edge. So I'll do that and then come back and I'm going to stitch that around then on the machine. I'm going to put my stitch length on a stitch length three. Um, I just think that when you're doing a hem, sometimes it's just better for it to be on a very, very slightly bigger stitch length than what you would use to attach your seams together. I just think that it possibly gives it a little bit room, more room for manoeuvre. So I'll just start getting that sewn up now and then we are done. So I'm just going to go and give everything a really good press and I'm going to pop it on and I'm going to give you a little twirl. enjoyed sewing that today or joining me if you haven't been sewing it and you've been watching along I really hope that you've potentially picked up some um, tips and things as well please feel free to ask me any questions in the comments I always like to try and answer everybody if I possibly can and also just to say if you enjoyed this and you'd like to see future sew alongs then do please press the subscribe button press the like button maybe comment in the comments below about certain garments you'd like to see as a sew along in the future as well so that's it from me today I, as I say I really hope you've enjoyed it you take care have a really good week and I'll I'll see you all again soon. Bye!